What's going on, AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. We've got five rounds left of the season, guys, so it's never been more important to find ways to differentiate your side, and therefore, I'm going to be letting you guys know five pods in which you can look to bring into your side that could potentially give you that separation and allow you to climb your way up the ranks in the last final stages of the season. So sit back and enjoy the video. So before we jump in and cover these five players, there might be some of you guys watching that might be new to fantasy and aren't familiar with the term pod. So what a pod is, is a point of difference. And what that means is a player with unique ownership. These types of players, because they are unique, if they do go on to perform well, you do reap the benefits and you are able to pull some rank as other coaches do not own them. So at this stage of the year, there's five rounds left. If you're looking to gain some rank, bringing in a point of difference is a great way to do this as you need to differentiate your side. You won't be able to catch the top sides if you have the same players that they have. So at this stage of the year, it's now or never in terms of taking some risks and bringing in some guys that are of low ownership. That is the main thing that I will be focusing on this video is giving you five players that are very low in ownership amongst top teams. So the first guy on the list is Cam Guthrie. If we take a look at Cam Guthrie here, he's got a season average of 108 which is fantastic. Whilst I don't think he's a top eight calibre midfielder, he's very close, he's there or thereabouts. If we take a look at some of his stats this year, he's proven that he's got a ceiling, which is what we want. We want guys that are unique, but can produce big scores, as that's what's gonna give you quite a big edge. So we can see here, He's had a 153, a 139, and a 138. So he certainly ticks that ceiling box. If we look at his games from round six to round 10, he's gone over 105 every game for an average of around roughly 120, which is absolutely super. He's then missed with some injury here. He's come back and he's been relatively solid building into the back end of the year. Geelong are trying to consolidate a top four spot at the moment. They do have some tough games and some easy games. Richmond, North, St Kilda are all relatively good games for him to score in. GWS and Melbourne could be a little bit more tricky, but with Geelong heavily relying on him through the midfield now. I do expect him to have a big finish to the year. I think he can be around 110 for the remainder and he's currently 0% ownership amongst top 50 sides. So if you're looking for a premium midfielder, I think Cam Guthrie could be a super unique pick and one that I do think is great. He's underpriced, he is value currently, so he's one that I would be quite keen on. If we're looking at other midfielders a little bit cheaper, for some of you guys that might be shopping on a budget, this guy here, Braden Fiorini, now this one is a lot higher risk. Personally, I would be trying to find that extra funds to get to a Cam Guthrie type, but Fiorini is one of those players who has always had a fantasy game about him. He's just been in and out of the side some of his disposals questionable and some of his decision making in the past has led to him being dropped, but he looks like he's consolidated a spot in the midfield. If we do take a look at uh, the CBAs for this week, 
we can see here that he's second behind Tuuk Miller in terms of centre bounce attendances at 71%, which is great. That is what we want to see. And his scoring of recent times has been quite good as well. He has gone back to back to back tons. So here we can see 101, 113 and 109. That does give him a last three game average of 107. He's currently priced at 93. And whilst I'm less bullish on him being able to produce an average like Cam Guthrie, I think he's still quite good bang for your buck. And if that's all you can get to, I don't mind it. I think he's still a great option. He's 1% ownership overall but his no percent ownership zero percent amongst top 50 coaches so if you're looking for someone he's quite consistent he should be able to average over a hundred but if he continues this form he could be more up around that 110 mark the only blemish is with Gold Coast they do have quite a tough draw coming up so Brisbane Melbourne and Sydney uh, three of their last five games to finish the season, which is quite rough, but I think he is still a good option. Third up, we have Jordan Dawson for the Swans. Now, a lot of guys are going to be trading Callum Mills this week and looking for a defender option. I think that you need to be going to a top six guy. So if you're looking for a Mills replacement, Jordan Dawson's probably not one that I hugely recommend. I think you want to be replacing him with someone that is a certain top six guy. But with Whitfield out last week, I mean, he does come back this week, you'd think. Mills is now out for uh, one to two, I believe, with COVID protocols. There's a little bit more room in that for that top six defender spot. And that last spot is a little bit wishy-washy. It's looking like Shannon Hearn, Christian Salem, Chris Main, one of those guys will probably fill that last spot. But Dawson comes in a little bit cheaper, 646k. So you're saving about 60 to 70k on those types. He's very unique, 0% ownership. And as you can see here, a last three game average of 101. So he's producing some nice scores, but the thing that I like most about Dawson is his run home. So we take a look, he's got Frio, Essendon, St Kilda, North Melbourne and Gold Coast Suns, which all in my opinion are pretty good sides to score against this year. So that's why I'm liking Dawson so much. I think that he's certainly a unique guy that you could consider. Because he is a bit cheaper at 646k, it may allow you to get an underperformer such as a Tom Phillips or one of those types of guys if you've still got one of them kicking around. If you can get them up to a Dawson, then I don't mind the move. But in saying that, even though I did say that trading a Mills type, you want to be going to a top six guy, so a guy like Laird, a guy like Crisp, one of those types... If you can go to Dawson and use that 150k to upgrade a Riley O'Brien to a Brody Grundy or something along those lines, then I could get behind doing a move like that also. So Jordan Dawson's probably that value guy in defense for me. If we move on, the next guy we have is Shy Bolton. He's quite cheap. He's priced at 80 currently. I think that a lot more responsibility will be put on Bolton through the midfield. As we know, Dustin Martin is out for the season now. Richmond will be looking to bring some guys in through there. It looks like they may get Kane Lambert back this week, along with Edwards potentially. So that will fill some of that midfield void. But I do think we'll see Bolton's CBAs bounce up a little bit. He did attend... 67% uh, last week, which was higher than where he has been at in recent times. I expect that to continue. As a result, his last two scores have been 90 and 84. If we have a look at some of his scoring earlier in the year, he did have a stretch 
as we can see from round four all the way through to round 13, where he had a low score of 85, produced some nice scores of 122, 107. That was when he was playing a majority midfield role. I expect that we'll see something similar to that. He does have some tougher games against Geelong and GWS, but for the most part, his run home's quite decent. Richmond do need a big lift if they're going to make finals, and I expect an X-Factor player like Bolton to produce some good footy over the next five weeks. I think with a lot of guys with Dusty, uh, they'll be looking for some mid-price forward replacements, and whilst there's quite a few around, I think Bolton is one that will be of very low ownership. Not many people would be considering it. With the next guy I'm about to talk about being a bit more of a popular target, some other guys like Taron Thomas, Rowan Marshall, these types of guys I think will probably assume more of the spotlight and therefore I think Bolton will go under the radar. So he could definitely be a good point of difference forward. In my opinion, he's 10 points under price, so the risk is quite low. And if he can get back to some of that form earlier in the year and produce 95 plus, then that's a huge win at the current price. So I like Shy Bolton as an option. And then moving on to my last guy. Now, this is the only guy in this top five that has some sort of ownership amongst top 50 coaches. My four previous guys have 0% ownership amongst top 50 coaches, but Matthew Kennedy currently sits at 16% owned, which is still relatively low. It's less than 10 of the top 50 coaches. I do think this number will rise this week, but in saying that, I think he's still unique enough. He's still a pod, and in my opinion, he's the number one value forward at the moment. I brought this guy in two weeks ago. As we can see here, he's got a last five game average of 98, which is fantastic. He's currently priced at 83. If we have a look at his last five weeks, there's not much to, to say there. He's been fantastic. Last week, there was no Paddy Cripps. He was able to spend about 30% more time in the middle, which did result in what would be his highest score for the year. I expect that Cripps will return this week, but with Carlton's midfield mix, they did perform well last week. I don't think they'll shake it up too much. I think with Cripps struggling and Carlton looking for a forward target, he could spend some more time forward. I think Kennedy's proven himself in that midfield mix, and he's going to at least be spending 50-60% time in there, which is good enough. I think with his run home, North, St Kilda, Gold Coast, he's got three great games in a row. I expect his scoring to be top tier for the next three weeks. And therefore, he's my number one forward value option. And whilst I, he's high on my trade in targets and will be brought in by many coaches, I think that he's still unique enough to serve as a pod for your side. So there you have it, guys. Those are my top five pods to bring in to help you get over the line. A couple of other names, some special mentions, Andrew Gaff, Tim Kelly, some of these types. If we're looking uh, in defense, Brody Smith's been in some good form. Uh, a couple more forwards, Rowan Marshall, Taron Thomas. Those are potentially some cheaper guys that you could look at. If you're really, really strapped for cash, Jack Martin at 470k could be someone you can look at, but for the most part, the guys I've got in my top five are probably the best options. I've tried to give you guys a spread of midfielders, defenders, and forwards so you guys can fit what you need amongst your side. All the guys in here are relatively cheap as well, so... In saying that, I'm going to wrap up the video here, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you've liked the video, drop a thumbs up. Leave me a comment who you're looking at as potential pods to finish the season, along with where you're ranked currently. 
subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the backfield. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to say my piece, I'm so after school special.